Hey, this is Pastor Jeff Daniel of Kingdom Light Church. Get ready today for a destiny molding, destiny changing, destiny impacting, and a destiny transforming word today. Because in Kingdom Light Church, you always know the truth, and that truth will set you free. Now, let's get ready for the word that will bring light to your life. God bless in Jesus' name. If you have your Bible, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's start our reading. It says, Therefore, if anyone, anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Hmm. If anyone claims to be in Christ, He's a new creation. If anyone tells you they're in Christ and they're still acting, talking, behaving like you knew before, they are not in Christ. If anyone is in Christ, that person is what? A new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have what become new verse 18 now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ you and Jesus or you and God are not fighting anymore amen <laughs> God is not your enemy anymore you are not his enemy anymore except you came up with something last night Otherwise, he says, we have reconciled. Amen? He says, and has given us something. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Verse 20 will be my emphasis this morning. Now then, we are what? Ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we employ you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 before you sit down. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. Philippians 3. 3 verse 20 together it says what for we for our what our citizenship is where let's read it again our what our citizenship is where from which we also eagerly wait for the savior the lord jesus christ is saying that you're here but your citizenship is in heaven and uh, there's another member of that citizen or that nation where you belong to he's in heaven he's coming to join us here too do you understand that uh, if you're eager to go there there's problem with that you are not supposed to be eager or in a hurry or let any devil chase you to go back there. <laughs> I know some of us, our problems is trying to chase us out of here to go there. No. It says you should be eagerly waiting for him to come. Okay? Because at the end of the day, we are still going to stay here anyway. Amen? We're still going to stay here. If you don't like the earth, I'm sorry, you're going to live here forever and ever and ever at some point in time. Because once it is renovated, then we're going to come back and stay here. Amen? It's not going to be that neighborhood where you live now that you don't like. You're going to be somewhere, you know, but it's still going to be on the earth. Father, help us today in Jesus' name. You may be seated. If you pray for me, I will try and preach because I've changed my subject a little bit because I don't um, have the I don't have the mental capacity to pull through this subject today. 
but my spirit will help me. I believe so. Amen. It's a new subject that we're going to hang on for a very long while. And since you come to Kingdom Light Church, this is supposed to educate us in order that we will appreciate why we are called Kingdom Light. And not just that, uh, that you, we just happen to be privileged to be named after the real deal for which Jesus Christ came. Uh, Jesus Christ came to introduce a kingdom. When you became born again, you were not introduced to a church. When you became born again, the Bible says he had delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, the church happens to be a place where you are to be nurtured. Uh, in other words, uh, the church is a part of a kingdom. But actually, you were delivered into a kingdom. So the church is where you are being taught how to function in the kingdom of God. Do, do you understand that? So if you don't understand the kingdom, you can be in church and be dysfunctional. Because you're supposed to know how the kingdom function so that you can survive or you are in the church so you can survive the kingdom. If you don't understand the kingdom, then you will think the ultimate is the church. But if you miss the church, you will certainly not profit in the kingdom. Amen? Just like... Um, some people went for adult education and, you know, the reason why they went to class, like you heard this morning, is that uh, so that they can function in that field in a new level or in a new realm. Do you understand? The class was necessary, but the goal is to be able to enjoy the kingdom. Are you still here? Our scripture reveals something. Number one, it says, you are an ambassador. We're going to talk about that, but like I said, not today. And then it tells you to confirm that you are an ambassador. It says, our citizenship is not here. Which means that, indeed, you are an ambassador because... You, you have to be somewhere or live in a different nation to be an ambassador in another location. Is that right? So, you are not a citizen of the earth. Since you are not a citizen of the earth, you have to understand why you are here. And if you don't know or believe that you are not a citizen of the earth, then you will negate the appointment that has been given to you as an ambassador. You see, the office of an ambassador is not an office that is open to election. It is exclusively the duty of the president of the nation to appoint the ambassador. Which means that it is not open to argument, uh, but that whatever the president or whoever he appoints as an ambassador, he stays. So God, who owns or who is the king in the kingdom where we came from, he said, everyone that is born again, the day you became born again, you got an appointment letter as an ambassador. Amen? I know you don't feel like it, but you're one. By the time you are educated properly, then you begin to talk like one. You're going to think like one. You're going to act like one. You're going to experience life like one. Because the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen? So I, I'm trying to educate you about your office. That 
when you became born again, you got an appointment letter, and that appointment letter says that you are an ambassador. Hallelujah. So you're an excellent individual. Amen. And you have been moved into a kingdom. When you study your Bible, you will discover this phrase, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. How many of you have seen that before? They are not the same. There is a kingdom of heaven and then the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is where God totally is in control right now. God is in control of the kingdom of heaven. And that is where we are going to go and live temporarily before we are finally brought back here. Amen? It is called what? The kingdom of heaven. God is totally in charge of the kingdom of heaven. Then you will hear Jesus Christ say this phrase, the kingdom of God. Right? Now, the kingdom of God is where the kingdom of heaven have subdued here on earth. Do you understand that? The kingdom of heaven Wherever the kingdom of heaven is present and is in total control on the earth, it has become the kingdom of God. Okay. This class is going to be tough today. <laughs> if you... The embassy of the United States of America in Ghana that location is considered as what? Is that right? So, that is not where American government actually is, right? But because it has an embassy there, it is considered so. So, the kingdom of heaven in the kingdom of America in Ghana will be considered the kingdom of God. Do you understand that? Is it making sense? Okay, let's try it again. Let me try this class. Where is my adult education student here? <laughs> so, it's saying that wherever you allow God to rule, it is the kingdom of God. If you allow God to rule in your life, your life has become the kingdom of God. That means God is the one that is the king in that place. Amen? Are we good up on this point? Okay. So, God's intention is that everywhere we look like his kingdom. Amen? Can you do me a favor and tell my friend that we've been looking for him for many years and we are happy to see him today. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. God's plan is that everywhere should look like his kingdom. The reason why Jesus Christ came is that he came to introduce the kingdom of heaven so that the kingdom of heaven will be transmitted to the earth and then everywhere will look like heaven. That's how he wants it to be. Okay? Now, you as a believer, the Bible says you have been moved already into that kingdom. You live in the kingdom of God. He brought you into that experience. But there are things you must do in order for it to look like you're in that kingdom. Can you help me this morning? I said you have been moved there. The question I would be do you look like you, look, you live in heaven? Do you talk like you live in heaven? Do you 
act like the people from heaven. On Tuesday, it will be um, 11 years since my mother passed. It's coming Tuesday. Uh, so, I, I said that because there's something that happened many years ago. I traveled home when she was, she was still alive at the time. So, I went home. Uh, we were here, I think, uh, five years. Then I, I, I traveled home for the first time. But before I embarked on that journey, uh, uh, we were doing a 21 days prayer and fasting. And after the 21 days prayer and fasting, I, I discovered it was just a hunger strike for me. I don't know how many of you have experienced that before, but let's not deal with that. But uh, anytime you fast and you didn't get an encounter, you just had a hunger strike. It wasn't fasting. You just, nothing happened. I have learned not to do that because I know if I fast, I'm supposed to get a feedback from heaven. Well, after 21 days prayer and fasting, there was no tangible feedback from heaven. And I said, no, this is a waste of time. I have to go back again. So I went back for another 21 days prayer and fasting outside of the corporate fasting that the church did because I needed to get something. By the time I exhausted the second 21 days prayer and fasting, uh, I passed 100% for uh, somebody from Somalia. The Lord will give you understanding. Because this time around, I became so aggressive where some people are wondering, what is that? And I was so anemic, I looked like an HIV patient. I was completely drained because I was fasting. I had just finished 21 days prayer and fasting. I started another one, and then I will break the fast with um, cereal. That was it. No pandemic. Another 21 days, that was tough for me. Anyway, after that fast, I got a very massive encounter that triggered a journey to travel to Nigeria. So I went in that condition. By the time I arrived, uh, remember, we have left Nigeria for five years. So, of course, everybody is expecting me to come. You know, this guy just arrived from, you know, America. You know, you know. I'm supposed to change my steps to you know, gapping and all of that good stuff. But when I arrived my hometown, <laughs> it was a massive disappointment. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they almost did a go phone <laughs> for me because, and uh, well, of course, my mother was. Uh, she was really, really disturbed. And uh, so the following morning, she called me to the corner to have a discussion with me. And uh, she started this way. She said, uh, you know, uh, you have helped us a lot before you left this country. <laughs> and you've been a blessing to us. Um, and uh, we know you very, very well. So... Uh, I just want you to be very plain. If this place that you went with your wife, <laughs> Amen. Anyway, I didn't mean to go that rabbit. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, anyway, <laughs> she said, if it's not, um, if it's not working, maybe you should come back home. <laughs> you know, and uh, she said, uh, and um, if you're going back, I still have some money that, I <laughs> that I've been saving. Um, I will give it to you. And the reason was because I didn't look like where I came from. Do you look like where the Bible says you are from? Do you look like that? Do you look like that? Or do we need to help you out? 
<laughs> Are you covering up? Or do you look like you're from heaven? Our citizenship is in heaven. Do you talk like you're from there? Do you understand where you live? Where you came from? You see, the frustration of life, or as a believer, is to be in a place where much is expected of you, and yet you don't have the evidence. Everybody expects that if you came from America, your life should be great. In fact, one of the trouble I got that time too was that I, um, I bought some gift. Because even though I, I didn't look physically, but in my pocket I had a little change, you know. And I, but unfortunately, uh, if you're from Nigeria, uh, you, you know that Nigerians can actually be very, very troublesome in terms of their value system. In other words, I bought gifts from America. Unfortunately, all the gifts were from China. <laughs> they were made in China. And uh, uh, there are a class of people in Nigeria that made in China is not their thing. Even though 99% of what we get in America is made in China. Is that right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. so, uh, but, um, yeah, the quality is different, but you don't have time to explain that. As long as they're concerned, it's made in China. So, another question, uh, uh, sir, are you really in America? <laughs> or do you live in China or something? Let's, let's be sure of this problem. Amen. <laughs> what you have in your house, what you have around you, where is it from? Our citizenship is where? It's in heaven. And we are ambassadors. Is that okay? So, now, if that is true, and it is very true, then we have to understand what we need to do in order for this to be our reality. In fact, any child of God that doesn't understand this reality will only be a religious believer and never come to where they can truly dominate. You need to understand that after the fall of man, we lost everything, and when Jesus Christ came back, his goal was to restore that dominion mandate to the believer. So when you became born again, the Bible says God did something, and he moved you into that kingdom now, spiritually, which is actually your real reality. Unfortunately, because that happened in the realm of the spirit, the day you gave your life, you, get ex you got excited. How many of you got excited the day you gave your life to Jesus Christ? You know how you got so happy, and that day you went back home, and it's like everything is new indeed. Until, uh, and in those seasons, if you ask anything, it's like God just answer, Pia. Is that right? Yeah, God was just answering your question. Everything you said. And then, um, the Lord will help you. Now, it looks like you pray and not getting it. It's because uh, those four seasons that you came, the truth of the matter, it wasn't because God was answering you fast. It was just because at that season of your life, your spirit was so open and you believed that experience that happened and everything that you saw, your spirit was so very active. That was why. 
It wasn't because God was just trying to pamper you so when you stay for a little bit, then he'll show you people like, you know, a new wife or a new girlfriend and everything will be nice until you come in, then they show you. No, 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 that was not the case. It's just that your spirit was active at that time and you, you could connect to God easily. And so today, I want you to understand something. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10, Jesus Christ taught us something. And just for this class today, I want you to know that as an ambassador, there is something you have been assigned to do. If you don't do that, you will not look like an ambassador and you will never experience life as an ambassador, even though you are one. Do you understand that? If you don't learn how to do that, even though you have the title, you have the position, your experience will not look like it. And people will wonder. You yourself will be wondering, am I really an ambassador? Am I really in the kingdom of God? Because the kingdom of God is designed such that your life will look like the one who is your king. Your life will look like the one who rules over you. Your life will look like the one who governs you. This is what it means to be in the kingdom of God. But in order to experience that, Jesus told us what we must do. So in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10, Jesus was teaching based on the question that was asked him. Teach us to pray. Let's see what he says. Verse 10. He says, when you pray... This is how you start. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Prayer is how you communicate to the country where you belong that sends you here. In order to get the resources for you to represent that country on the earth. Let me say it again. If you understand this, you won't need... Anyone to motivate you to pray. Prayer is the avenue by which you communicate to the king in the kingdom where you came from so that whatever you need as an ambassador can be given to you. You can't be an ambassador and you're not communicating with your home country. No. How could you be an ambassador that is sent from America and a whole week you have not communicated with the United States? A whole month you have not communicated with the United States and you still believe you are the ambassador? No. You've lost your office. As a child of God, Jesus said, this kingdom of heaven if it's going to become the kingdom of God in your life, in your home, in your business, in your marriage, and in your career, he says you can transport that kingdom through prayer into your life. That kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, what you are desiring is already a past tense or something existing somewhere. And the only way you can have it is you have to call your home country. Whatever I don't have here, they have it there. I need it here. Do you understand that? Oh, Jesus Christ. You are not a citizen here. Your status is different. You are an ambassador. So, the experiences of the people around you shouldn't suggest that that should be your experience. No. No. Because you are not a citizen. If you don't understand that you are not a citizen but that you are an ambassador, then when there is trouble, when people are running to the police station, when people are suffering, you will join them and be running helter-skelter. Meanwhile, 
All you need is to dial a number and you will have a different type of protection, security that will be brought to you. So Jesus Christ, when he was being harassed, he says, do you not know that if not that this is the will of God, I would have called the headquarters and they will send me legions of angels. If you don't know how to call, there will be a problem. You are in the kingdom. You are going to learn a lot of things about this kingdom uh, such that you could be in that kingdom and know that you can lose your appointment as an ambassador. And when you lose it, it means you become a citizen. You are still a citizen, right? But you don't have any office anymore. Being a citizen is a lot of risk involved. Amen? When you are just a normal or ordinary citizen of a nation, there are certain things that we are going to see. We are going to investigate <laughs> Because there are many Christians who are in the kingdom, but they are not functioning as ambassadors. And so, their life is not different from any other person that you see around. But you see, you have to understand that if Jesus Christ said, when you pray, say, thy kingdom come. I want your rulership to be expressed in my life. Can you imagine how sweet prayer is? Well, if we're going to do that, Jesus Christ taught us something about this thing called prayer. Because somebody's like, well, I have been praying. How come that kingdom has not, <laughs> I'm not seeing it. No, there are things you must learn how to do. Amen? In Exodus chapter 19 and verse 6, Exodus 19 and verse 6, or maybe beyond that. Let's start from verse 1. Exodus 19 and verse 1. Let's start from verse 1. It says, Have you found? In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day they came to the wilderness of Sinai. Uh -huh. For they had departed from Rephidim and had come to the wilderness of Sinai and, and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain. And Moses went up to God and the Lord called to him from the mountain saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you how on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Okay. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you will be what? A special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is what? Is mine. Did you see that? All the earth is mine. Don't worry about it. I own the earth, it's mine. If you obey my voice, if you treasure my commands, if you keep my commandments, I want you to know first that all the earth is mine. I can do whatever I want to do with it. I can give you anything you want to have. It is mine. The condition is that keep my words. And then let's see the outcome. Verse 6. And what will happen? And you shall be to me, what? A kingdom. A kingdom of who? In this kingdom that you have been moved into, everybody is to be a priest. In the kingdom of God, every one of us is supposed to be a priest. Let me say that again. In this kingdom, you are everyone, like you heard the Bible says, we're ambassadors. The ambassador is to represent or bring to bear the interest of the country that sent him or her into that other location. In other words, whatever is the interest, whatever 
is the lifestyle or the culture in the country that sent that uh, ambassador. His job is to make sure that he represents his country properly in that new location. Do you understand? The Bible says, in order for that to happen for you and I, you must be a priest. God's intention is that every one of us must be a priest. Two years ago, I, read a, I wrote a book. I'm a royal priesthood. You need to read that book. It came from this scripture. Each one of us is supposed to be a priest. I want to emphasize that because if you lack priesthood, you cannot enjoy the kingdom of God. Remember, it is the kingdom of what? Priest. When God wanted to establish this desire, um, Saul, in his wickedness, he went and killed all. Because God began to gather priests. Remember, one time, there was a city, and the whole city, everybody there was a priest. And Saul, in his evil and wickedness, he went and killed all of them. That was the most horrible thing that happened to God after the fall of man. Because God was beginning to fulfill that dream. So Jesus Christ came and salvation have brought you into priesthood. Priesthood primarily is prayer. The assignment, the number one assignment of the priest is prayer. If you understand what prayer is, then you are truly representing the kingdom. Why is that necessary? Because prayer is one thing the devil hates the most. Yeah. I know the devil can lie to you that you pray a lot. I was meditating the other day and the Lord said to me, anytime the devil tells you you pray too much, that is when you should start praying. Because if you are supposed to be a priest, that means that is your job description. So let's consider why it is important for me to pray. Jesus Christ taught us something, and I will spend a little time there just to show us why it is important for you to pray. Luke chapter 18 is a parable that says Jesus Christ taught a parable that men always ought to pray and not do what? Not lose heart. King James says, and not faint. Can we do a little class this morning? When someone faints, what condition is that medically? Are you adult education too? Or I'm looking at you, you're looking at me. Huh? Is what? Pass out. Uh huh. I'm looking for one word. When someone is fainting, how is their breathing? It's okay. Are you a nurse or a pharmacist? So just hold up. Let me talk to the ones that really will give me the answer I need. Okay? Okay. So, that means when you are fainting, you, you have issues with breathing. Is that right? Not really. Okay. Okay. Let's leave it alone. Since all of you are arguing the medical aspect, I know that when someone faints or are in the fainting state, they are not functioning properly. Is that right? They are not in their good respiratory state of being. Low blood pressure, all of that. The Bible says that men always ought to pray and not faint. So when a man is not praying, he's in a fainting position. When you are not praying, in the realm of the spirit, you have fainted. Is that making sense to you? If you are not praying, 
you are not operating a prayerless Christian life. No, you are fainting. And if you are fainting, I wonder how you can function in life. When someone has fainted, do they function? Do they go to work? When someone has fainted, can they keep a good marriage? When someone has fainted, can they keep a business? When someone has fainted, can they communicate help? No. Jesus said, men always ought to pray and not faint. So if you are not always praying, you have always been in a coma state. Why did he say that? The reason why he says that, our scripture will reveal to us. So he began by explaining why it is necessary for you to always pray. So he says, there was a widow in a particular city. Is that right? So, a widow. What, who is a widow? One who lost her husband. Okay, that is a good answer. What or who is a widow? Huh? Without help. A widow is without help. A widow is one at the mercy of people's goodwill. Do you understand that? A widow is what again? One without covering. Do you understand that? A widow is one without help. A widow is one who is vulnerable. A widow is one who is at the mercy of people's goodwill. So Jesus Christ in teaching prayer, he says there was a widow in a particular city. If that was all, we will be fine. That, okay, well, if she is there, there are other people too that can help her. Then the Bible says, no, she has a problem. Can you put our scripture so we can follow carefully? Verse 2 now. Saying there was a certain city, there was in a certain city, a judge who did not fear God. Where is my widow there? Widow is in verse 1. Okay, we know it's in verse 3. Good. So it started by telling us there was what? A judge in a particular city. And let's see the character of that judge. The, number one is what? Verse 2. Give me verse 2. The judge does know what? Fear God and then has no what? Regard for what? Don't forget the character of this judge. He, what, does not fear God and has no, what, regard for man. So there is an entity or somebody who doesn't fear God, but he's a judge. He occupy an office that you will bump into him needing help. Or he will be an obstacle in your life to getting the help you need in life. And don't forget, the Bible is telling us also that in that same city, there's a widow which we have described. So, Jesus is saying here, you as a believer, uh, the reason why you need to pray is because if you don't pray, you are just as helpless as a widow. If you are not a praying Christian, your life will just be like a widow. Meanwhile, it's not supposed to be so. And the reason why you need to pray is because there is a body or a judge who does not fear God and has no regard for your certificate. He has no regard for your age. He has no regard for all the dealings and every effort you are making in life. And if you are going to be truthful to yourself, you will know that it looks like the world system has no regard for my labor, has no regard for my effort, has no regard for my certificate, has no regard that you are fine. God created you pretty. And yet, it looks like something won't allow you to get married. God created you pretty, but it looks like everything is contending for you not to be fruitful in life. You have put so much labor and effort in life, and it looks like something keeps blocking you. The Bible says, since you need help, you need to pray. 
And the reason why you got to do it is because there is a judge in that same city where you are. He has no fear of God and he has no regard. That means that the devil will not one day wake up and say, I have mistreated you for so long. Let me leave you alone now. The devil is not going to wake up. You know, there was a day Jesus went to the temple in Luke chapter 13. And there was a woman who was bent over for what? 18 years. Do you know until Jesus showed up? The devil did not say 18 years is bad enough. I don't know how long that problem has been in your life. The devil will not wake up one day and say, I have harassed you. I have molested you. I have tortured you so long. I'm going to leave you alone. Satan has no capacity for sympathy. Because he has no regard for your life. He has no regard that you, you are a believer. He has no regard that you are in the kingdom of God. He has no regard that you are faithful and committed. No, there is a wicked judge, has no fear of God, has no regard for man. Are you still here? That's why I have to pray. I have to pray because of this wicked judge that will play his role in everybody's life. He will play that role. Have you ever wondered why the devil will even cause a little child to be sick? But that devil has no regard. He doesn't care. So he says there is something that God has given us as kingdom ambassadors. And it is called priesthood. And priesthood is not what you do when you feel like doing it. It's not what you do just because you have problem. Priesthood is what you do every day. The Bible says that the light in the altar or on the altar, the fire should never go out. The job of a priest is everyday job. The jo you don't wait for trouble to pray. No, you pray to stop trouble from coming. Those who wait for trouble to come can't pray well because you pray in anxiety. Do you understand that? Many times the reason why your prayers are not answering or being answered is because you are praying from an agitated position. You are not praying with faith. And in this kingdom, if you don't have faith, your prayers cannot be answered. Make prayer your lifestyle because there is a wicked king. You must understand that you are helpless without prayer. You are helpless without God. You are helpless without communicating to the kingdom of heaven so that the kingdom of heaven will become the kingdom of God here in your life. Do you understand that? Give me my scripture back. Let's see what it says. So, what did he say? Saying, okay, now there was, okay, we've done that. Okay, now this is what the, the widow is asking. What is the widow asking? Get justice for me. From what? My adversaries. My adversary. The Bible says a great and effectual door has been opened unto me, but my adversaries are many. In other words, the adversary is a wrestler. The adversary is not a boxer. That word there is a wrestler. The Bible says when God opens a door, no man can close the door. Is that right? And when he shuts the door, no one can open that door. Every dream you had, it was God opening a door for you. Every encounter of the blessings of God, every opportunity that came to you that seemingly was swept off, it was God opening the door. The reason why you didn't experience it is because an adversary who is a wrestler has wrestled you to the intent that you couldn't enter. Satan can close the door that God has opened, but Satan can stop you from entering into the door that God has opened. Do you understand that? I said, Satan cannot close the door that God has opened to the believer. But what Satan will do, he will wrestle you so you don't enter that door. And the Bible says, in order for you to break off the hand of the adversary, you got to be like this widow woman. It says, get me justice from my adversary. 
that door that the enemy won't let you enter, that door of peace, that door of joy that the devil has been resisting you from entering, in the name of Jesus Christ, this month, you are breaking free into your inheritance in the name of Jesus Christ. Did you understand that? It says, give me justice and let's read the next verse. It says, and he will not for a while. He will not for a while. When you don't get free or freedom for a while, don't give up. Because for a while, you won't see the result you're expecting. For a while, you won't see your expectations. For a while, the business will not go well. For a while, the marriage will be turbulent. For a while, the business will be dragging. For a while, your health might suffer some issues. But it is just for a while. For our afflictions are just but for a while. It is working for us a far more exceeding weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. It doesn't matter how rough it is. According to the Bible, it is for a while. Glory be to God. Did you understand? You see, in this kingdom, I'm trying to tell you how in this kingdom things are. If you know how to function in this kingdom, you know, just uh, be like um, uh, when, uh, when we first came. When we first came to the U.S., I got the best of jobs. And that job was really, really, I set myself up not to be able to pay bills. Because I got a job in the car dealership to sell cars. Amen? That means that I'm going to be talking with Americans and I just came from Nigeria. <laughs> that means that when I say this is a car, they'll be hearing a cow. <laughs> and that is so true. I was having a conversation and this guy was believed so much that I was talking about a cow. <laughs> because they call it car. They call it water. I wonder why is it that they removed the tea? The tea needs to be there for it to sound well water. You know? <laughs> but you see, every time I went out, I'm in the mall, I'm in the store, I'm talking somehow somebody is attracted to my conversation. Have you ever been there before? Have you? you know, I know you're all Americans now, you know. But, you know, when you are really with that thick, yeah, when you are on the queue or on the line, the other day I say queue, my daughter was laughing at me. That, that is a queue. Because in Nigeria, line means queue. We call it, yeah? So, it's like, it's lying, daddy. I said, okay, don't worry. It's lying. So, uh, when you are there, you are talking, somebody is like turning to see who is that. Because you are not from this kingdom. When was the last time your conversation attracted people to prove that you are from heaven? Because in heaven, the Bible says, you will have what you say. In heaven, you say, let the weak say, I am strong. And so that if you are not saying things like that, you have blended into the system. Have you blended into the world system? Or are you still standing out in what you say? Because in this kingdom, you must understand the language is different. You must talk different. You must think different. You must act different. Somebody ought to at least every week by hearing what you say, wonder where are you from? Don't you know that milk is $3 now? 
What is wrong with you saying I will never suffer? What is what what, what do you mean by I cannot be sick? Don't you know that is COVID or there is sickness, there is cancer? How can you say I will not be a victim of this disease or that disease? No, where I came from, we immune ourselves with what we say daily. Glory be to God. Do you understand that? You, your, 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 your mouth is your immune uh, immunization. Your mouth, you, you talk what you are not supposed to. Oh, Jesus Christ. Be careful what comes because you are not from here. And you can only do that when you understand that what you're going through is just for a while. Do you understand? It says it's for a while. Don't miss it. It's just for a while. Because you are here. You know, there is a war where, is it in uh, Sudan? How many of you know that most countries have their embassy in Sudan? Is that right? Now, the American embassy in Sudan, the ambassador of America that is in Sudan, right? Because of this war, don't you think he has a temporal setback or a circumstance that has also affected him in, the, in some type of way? Is that not true? Did he cause the problem? It's just that his assignment in that location and because of the trouble in that location somehow now has affected him in a way. Is that not true? <laughs> because we are on earth, the Bible says there will be troubles here. As an ambassador, when there is trouble here, that doesn't mean you are in trouble. No. No. You are an ambassador. The location where you are, there is war, there is famine, there is disaster. So that doesn't mean that you are in trouble. No, it's a temporary situation. And if there is need for you to be moved from there, the country that sends you will call, make arrangements to bring you out. Is that right? So, it's for a while. The Bible says... For a while, the wicked king did not respond. For a while, Satan will make it look like your prayers doesn't make any impact. For a while, Satan will make it look like God is not responding to you. For a while, it will look like that sickness is not responding to your confession. For a while, that job situation will look like there is nothing you can do about it. No. Let's read the next verse. It says what? And he will not for a while, but afterward, what did he say? But afterward, he said, did he say it to the woman? Did he say it in the courtroom? Where did he say it? Ah, the Bible is giving you an insight to the weakness of Satan. This is an exposition that while you are trying to give up, Satan is already saying, uh oh, no, this is a wrong address I went to. This is a wrong house I went to. This is a wrong sister. This is a wrong marriage. This is a wrong business I went to. This, no, 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 no. I shouldn't have. This one here, oh no, they are very serious. They will not stop until they break me. I'm saying that Satan has a weak spot. And the Bible is expressing to us here that look, just because you don't see your problem changing or the situation changing doesn't mean that you're not impacting it with your prayer. Glory be to God. I know you fasted for three days and nothing changed. Don't worry. The three days have impacted the problem. If you sit back, you will see the outcome. Hallelujah. He says, he said within himself, I know myself. You see how that wicked king is bragging. Though I do not fear God, and I have no regard that you graduated for many years, and you're still doing a CNA job. 
Do you understand that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no regard. I have no regard that by now your life should have been better. I have no regard that by now your commitment to God, by now things should have changed. I have no regard for that. You know, every trouble in your life is a disregard to you as a child of God. It's a disrespect to you as a child of God. You have to understand that. He said, I have no regard for man. But, verse, yet, because of what? I'm a widow. I am helpless, but there is something I can do. Yes, there is something I can do. At least that widow is saying, look, I don't have any help over me. Uh, but I know that if I can persist to seek justice, because this is a system that has been set up. And because it is a system that is set up, it is meant to give me help. And if I don't have help, I won't stop. You see, it is when you value prayer that you won't stop praying. It is when you value that prayer is what God said. When you pray, say that kingdom come. Do you know what it means? He's not talking about bread. He says, if you pray, I will pull my kingdom into your vicinity and your life will look like heaven here on earth. That if you pray effectively, which means that there will be resistances for that kingdom not to come to you. But if you stay like this widow woman, because I know this is where my help is coming. Somebody is being motivated now. Glory be to God. Do you understand? That you'll be like this. See, the reason why you don't pray is because you have options. This widow, Jesus gave us an example of one who had no other option. You see, the reason why we don't pray in America is because we have too many options. Too many options. And if you have any other option, you won't be persistent because prayer is what you do persistently. If you know you will get the help somewhere when you knock on this door and it is not open, you will do something else. Some of us, and that's the kind of people I want to raise here, that you're going to be somebody who knows this problem is not issue of my job. No, 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 no. This one is not about my qualification. This one is a force beyond me that is working against me. Do you understand? You see, you better learn how to deal with issues from the realm where it is real. Because the Bible told us clearly that the things which are seen are a product of what is not seen. What you see was manufactured by the unseen. If you're not seeing what you ought to see, you must learn the wisdom to travel into the unseen realm where things are manufactured so that you can produce it there, then it will manifest on the earth. If you are healthy, it's because in the realm of the spirit, there is a permission to be healthy. If you are sick in your body, something went wrong in the realm of the spirit, you can alter it there and then it will happen here. The Bible says this is how God created things. He did not only create the visible, he created both the visible and the invisible realm. And the invisible realm is the parent of the visible. A child of God who prays is the person who travels into the realm of the invisible in order to create things that will manifest in their life here. And because in the realm of the invisible, it is not only God that is there. It is not only Jesus that is there. It is not only angels that are there. No, demonic spirits are there to contain so that when you pray, they don't want you to experience it. And if the Bible is saying, in order for that to happen, you must be an ambassador who knows his right. That whatever is in heaven, I must make sure I establish it here on the earth. Glory be to God. Do you understand that? It's persistency. Insistency. It's enforcing the will of God here on the earth in your life. And then Jesus Christ is telling us something about this prayer life here. Let's look at it finally. It says, 
because of her what? Oh, let's see the message. But because this widow won't quit what? Badgering me. Hmm. I did better do something and see that she gets justice. Otherwise, I'm going to end up beating black, blue. Wow. Did you see that? I love it. The devil is saying, every day you pray, he's afraid that you don't keep praying. Anytime you are praying and the devil is saying, or oh, you are feeling tired, the devil is actually telling you, look, you are punching me too hard. You are punching me too hard. You keep punching him. And then he says, otherwise, he will beat me, what? Black and blue. Somebody say, I'll beat the devil black and blue. I will beat sickness black and blue. Go back to verse. No, our time is up. <laughs> oh, intolerable annoyance. Go to verse 6 now. So the Bible says, how continual coming she would. Then the Lord said, what did the Lord said? Hear what the unjust judge is saying. Did you get it? The Lord, in this teaching, the emphasis of the teaching on prayer, I want you to live here with this today. Jesus said, hear what the unjust judge is saying. The whole lesson about prayer is that if you don't hear or understand what the unjust judge is saying, you won't pray. You will give up easily. So let's see what the unjust just said. Because that is what we actually ginger you to always pray. What did he say? Give us verse 4 in Amplified now. Or maybe the black blue one. This is what the judge said. He never gave her the time of a day. But after this went on and on and on, he said to himself, I care nothing what God thinks, even less what people think. Verse 5. But, this is what the judge is saying. Because this widow won't quit, bargering me, I did better do something and see that she gets justice. Otherwise, I want this scripture to stick because this is the lesson on prayer. It says, just I'm giving you insight, a secret to what is happening behind the scene. That thing that has no regard for you. If you're really worried about it, why do I have to struggle this much for my life to change? It has no regard for you. Why is this life so much of struggles and troubles and challenges? It has no regard that you're a human being. Have you ever been in a place like, why are you treating me as if I'm not a human being? Why are you treating me as if I am not educated? Why are you treating me as if I didn't go to school? Why are you treating me as if I am lazy? If you have ever come to where you ask such questions, the Bible says, don't give up. Hear what your trouble is saying that you don't know that it is saying. It is saying that, uh oh, if you just keep doing this thing, I have a weakness, I will give up. In other words, let your trouble be the one that will give way, not you giving way. Do we have people like that who will say, I don't care? I believe that prayer works. I will keep praying and I will keep hammering. I don't care what it looks like right now because I know by my continual coming, I will weary that problem. I'm not going to be the one that is weary. I'm not going to be the one that is tired. No, 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 no. Don't say I am tired of this problem because your problem is also tired of you. Amen? Do you understand that? Can you flip it? Hear your problem saying, I am tired of you. What kind of problem are you? That means, be a problem to your problem. 
Shebi came as a problem. You became a problem. So that the problem will leave you alone. And the only way that problem will leave you will not be because you cry. No. The problem will not leave you because you are frustrated. Your problem will not leave you because you are a child of God. It will leave you because you insist. Jesus said, hear what the wicked judge is saying. And if you hear it, then he says, that is what faith is. Amen? Have you been blessed? Glory be to God. We're going to continue on the subject of the kingdom. The Lord put in my heart to focus on that. So we're going to be talking about the kingdom and we'll be talking about light. So get ready. Please, I will encourage you to come with your notes because there are going to be a lot of note taking. It's going to be a series that will engage so much so you know where you are. Remember, even though you drove very well, you could reverse your car when you were in Ghana, in Nigeria, or in Mexico. But when you came to America, you had to do what? Take a driving test. Because you're in the new kingdom. Is that right? Uh, you have to read a book. Okay? I taught my wife to drive in Nigeria. I was driving in Nigeria with a car that you can hot wire. I mean, uh, you, if there is a wheel, I can drive it. I came to America. My first driving test, they said, they said, oh, it's not that I fell. They said that I didn't pass. My wife that I taught driving, she passed. You know that thing has been hurting me since that time. <laughs> because in this kingdom, you have to learn in order to live well here. If you come to the kingdom, if you don't learn how to drive, the police will be stopping you all the time. Stand to your feet and let's give our offering and then we're going to pray. Prepare your offerings tonight. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Have you been blessed today? Give God your first offering of the month. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, faithful God. Blessed be your holy name. The information will be on the screen. And uh, those of you who are giving checks or cash in the house, the ushers will bring in the offering bucket. If you're ready with your offering, let's lift it up before God together. Father, we thank you this afternoon for the privilege to give. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. The Bible says in this kingdom, we shouldn't be deceived. God is not mocked. He said, whatsoever a man sow, they will also reap. Father, we are sowing today. In this kingdom, we reap what we sow. As we sow today, let your word come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. You may give your offering. Thank you guys so much for listening to this message. We do hope you were truly blessed by it. Please don't forget to like this video, comment, subscribe, share with people, friends, family, colleagues, everyone around you. And also don't forget to turn on your post notification bell. It's right here so that you can get notified whenever we post a video. Thank you guys so much once again and do have a blessed week. Bye-bye.